Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Spaghetti Detective, see what it does and then uh, create our own installation of that on our own Jetson Nano server. So uh, let's start with what the Spaghetti Detective does. It uh, watches your 3D prints to detect spaghetti, I think that much was obvious. And uh, yeah, by spaghetti I mean the failed prints. So if you actually look at the spaghetti gallery here, you can see some failed prints. My internet isn't great today for some reason, so there we go, it loaded. And it's buffering, but never, you can see that it's uh, it's already marked as failing. And once it detects a failure using its rhythm, it alerts you and or uh, pauses the print. So uh, it's mostly used for that. It has a few other useful features depending on your exact setup. For example, if you're using their service, you can use it to monitor your 3D printer from outside of your home. Or you can also do that through setting up a VPN or don't do this but you can also do it with just enabling some port forwarding settings in your router. But uh, yeah, its primary function is watching your 3D prints. It's also good for being able to look at them in one screen. For example, I have two printers, my Voron 2 and my Voron 0. This will allow me to monitor them, both of them, from the same screen. But obviously this comes at a cost. So you either have to subscribe to their service or you have to uh, install it in your hardware. You have a few f options for that, but uh, really uh, you can't really use a Raspberry Pi or anything like that. It has to be a decently powerful hardware. So you can install it on your computer if you wish, as long as it has an NVIDIA GPU for the algorithm. Uh, or you can install it in anything else if you want to experiment with it. For example, I used to run it on my, in a virtual machine in my NAS server. Of course, some functions of it worked, but yeah, it wasn't an ideal setup. If you want an ideal setup, you either have to use it on your desktop or set up uh, or use a Jetson Nano like I'm going to do. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at the hardware here and then we'll see how to set it up. So here is the board the Spaghetti Detective is going to run on. It's a Jetson Nano 2 gig developer kit. Just like Nvidia's misleading marketing with their GPUs, there is a level of misleading marketing here as well. There is also a 4 gig version that's just called Jetson Nano without the gig. And uh, it has the difference between this and that is a bit more than uh, just the memory. The ports are different, the camera interfaces are different, uh, you know, a few changes like that, but overall this should be powerful enough for my use, so uh, I don't mind uh, cheaping out on this a little bit. So in here we have the kit itself. I mounted the Noctua fan here, by the way, that doesn't come with the kit, but other than that, uh, this entire board comes with your order. So you can see that the actual module is mounted on a, I think that's just a dim slot. And just like the older uh, Raspberry Pi developer stuff. And it's mounted on a larger board for the breakout. And this is where things differ. With the 4 gig version you also get a display port out, you get a better USB connectivity. You get another camera interface and things like that. You can mount a 5 volt fan just like I did. I went with this Noctua one because I had it lying around. Uh, I don't know how much it affects the performance if at all, but I noticed the mounting holes there, so I go went ahead and mounted it. So uh, yeah, this is the unit. It comes with a quick start guide and in here there is also a extension cable with a dongle on it. I was confused at first about why this was, you know, included, I d and uh, yeah, the answer is the unit doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi, and uh, it is on here. But uh, in my case, though, I'm going to use the Ethernet because I'm planning on keeping this near my router, so that means I don't need this, and it's a nice bonus to have a short uh, USB extension cable like this and a Wi-Fi dongle in case I need it. I also printed a case for this. It is the case designed for the normal Jetson Nano, so you can see that there are more ports on this, but uh, yeah, it still fits. It's just, it's the same dimensions, it's just some of the 
ports are missing or chain swapped out but uh, yeah you can see that it fits in here nicely and on top of that here is the cover for it you just slide it on and it clicks in place and stays nice and tight you also need a micro SD card just like uh, with any uh, Raspberry Pi computer you might have and that inserts it you insert it to the module here the upper module the actual compute part and uh, yeah that's the only other thing you need uh, unfortunately you actually need a relatively large micro SD card apparently the minimum is 32 gigs so uh, yeah I had to order a new one for some reason the screen recordings I did I don't uh, have voice recordings I don't know what happened, but I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the Windows update, but I checked my sound settings, etc. They're all there. And I used the NVIDIA's uh, recording thing, I forgot what they called it, and well, that failed me. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to do this as a voiceover. First thing you need is the Jetson Nano image to download, the SDK. And uh, yeah, you can download the appropriate image from the NVIDIA website, I'll link it in the description below. And then from that, what you do is you just uh, format your SD card with the official SD card formatter, and then uh, using Etcher, just etch the image you downloaded from the NVIDIA's website. Next, uh, we need to do the setup of the Jetson Nano. There are two ways of doing this. You can do this by connecting your Jetson Nano to your computer using the micro B cable and you also have to provide power to the USB-C cable but for some reason, I don't know if, if it's something to do with the cable I used or if my unit was faulty, I don't know, I'm, I'm leaning up I'm guessing the cable but I don't know for sure I couldn't get that to work the COM port wasn't detected but there is an alternative uh, you just connect a keyboard, a keyboard, a mouse and a display and you can do the setup there it is basically the usual Ubuntu setup. You accept the terms as usual to become human centipede. And next you select your language and then your keyboard layout and your location and then your account settings and the partition size which you can leave it as default and the swap file which you should enable and you delete the unloaded bootloader stuff and uh, select the NVP model mode which we can leave it as default and that's it once you've done that the system configuration uh, will happen it will reboot and do a few stuff like that and once you're ready you will be booted into the desktop and then on the top right of the screen if you select the network icon you can uh, click on the connection information and from that you can find your IP address and the rest of the steps are pretty simple. You just have to SSH into your Raspberry, uh, I almost said Raspberry Pi again, your Jetson Nano. And uh, yeah, you use that, use the account and the password you created during the setup process. And uh, you're in. Now the next step is installing Docker and Docker Compose. But before you do that, it's just good practice to update your software. So do a usual sudo apt-get up update and then sudo apt-get upgrade. If you uh, come across some yes and no dialogues, you just hit Y for yes. And then you install some dependencies, and then you install Docker, and, and use pip to install Docker Compose. And uh, yeah, th that's really about it. Your setup will be ready. And I'll also link all of the commands used in the description in a haste bin link, because paste bin is banned here for some stupid reason. And uh, well, once you've done that, you can run the hello world script to just to verify the docker setup is working. So again, that's also in the description. And by running that, you can see that the docker setup is working. The next step is cloning the repository. So again, all of the comments are there. Just uh, clone the GitHub repository. And then using nano, which by default, your system won't have so you'll have to install it sudo apt-get apt install nano or you can use a different text editor if you wish I'm just used to nano uh, using that create a file called docker compose.overwrite.yml and add the stuff that I show here and then you edit two more files the 
the file in the web directory called docker file and the file in ml api called docker file you just um, edit the repository information from the default to raymond's which is one of the warm devs by the way and uh, yeah he he's also working on the spray detective project so he has some experience with this so uh, yeah once you change all of that you go what you do is just run sudo docker compose up and this will take some time and once you've done it the initial setup is ready next step is configuring uh, django stuff so just go to your ip port 3334 and uh, after your ip at admin and then you log in with root at uh, you log in with root at example.com with the password super secret and then you can change your password with the link in the description below and uh, yeah once you've done that then you need to edit your uh, site settings so uh, click on sites and then click on example.com and then edit the domain name with your domain name of uh, your server's IP address with with the port 3334 in the end and uh, well that's about it and your uh, setup should work now next go to the website and then uh, li click on link octoprint and you can follow the instructions there on your octoprint installation uh, you should have the plugin installed just change the IP address or the server and then use the uh, wizard to add the uh, spaghetti detective you can't paste the code there so you have to type it in and there we go it says it was linked com it is linked successfully and it's really that simple now it should work the reason it didn't work in my first try is because as i said i already had a server i added the ip address as you saw but uh, Spaghetti Detective already tried to connect to the old server back when the plugin was started multiple times, it failed and it gave up. So all it took was hitting the test button on the screen and then the connection was established. And from that it worked just as intended. And the algorithm is watching the prints just fine. So far I didn't have a failed print so I can't really comment on if it is detecting failed prints or not but it is definitely working now another thing i like about Octo uh, another thing i like about the spaghetti detective is its notification system you can set it up to receive notifications through emails through sms's or through discord i think there is another option that i forgot well configuring SM uh, configuring emails is a bit more complicated and plus uh, you don't always get the uh, email notification instantly on whatever device you're using and uh, as for the SMS I haven't tried configuring it but it uses Twilio which means you have to pay for it so you know it, there's no reason to do that in my opinion so what I like to do is use Discord for this so uh, in my case I created a Discord server and created a webhook to the printer's channel and you just create the webhook and you create the webhook by going to your uh, channel settings, edit channel integrations under that you can find webhooks and from that you can add a webhook you can name it, you can change its avatar etc and once you've done it you just copy the webhook URL paste it on the preferences page of your Spaghetti Detective server now, uh, because of this uh, stupidity of the whatever they're using for the server, it doesn't automatically save. I really don't like that. I'd rather have a button for this, but it's designed to save once you type something. But obviously, when you paste it, it doesn't work. So what you do is you just add a space or whatever, and then remove it, and then it saves. You can see the tick next to it, and with that, you can, uh, with that, it should send notifications. So I've just done it and uh, let's see if it sends a notification to me or not so i got the notification i didn't scroll down intentionally so you can see it up here and now let's scroll down and well you can see the date and everything here and the new message with the different avatar avatar there so uh, yeah that's definitely the print finish notification there as i said i didn't have a failed print or anything yet but uh, yeah the, the finished notification is working 
So yeah, that's my setup with uh, the spaghetti detective. I intentionally didn't title this video a tutorial because I can I think the disconnect between the voiceovers and what's going on on the screen could be jarring to some people but yeah if you can uh, get over that you can use this as a tutorial as well I'll also link the written guides in the description below if you're interested but uh, as I said that's my setup and uh, I'm pretty happy with it and uh, if you are interested in something like this I definitely recommend a similar setup for you as well and uh, that's it for this video, so I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give me a like down below, and thanks for watching.